It's what you guys often comment on my YouTube videos. And one particular topic stood out like a sore thumb. Whether we need our salary to pay the bills, look after our family, spend it on things that we enjoy. Whatever it is, we go to work to ultimately earn money. And there's a massive stigma around the transparency of the money we earn. YouTube, however, has gone in what I believe a great deal to change that. We're seeing numerous content creators creating how much I earn in a day video, how much I earn in a week, how much I earn in a year. Only but surely, I genuinely believe the stigma and the brick wall between your disclosure of your salary is reducing. And that's why I believe I keep getting these comments on my channel and why I believe you guys want me to disclose my salary. But what we're going to talk about today in particular is salaries in the accountancy and finance industry. Hayes, a massive recruiter here in the UK, produce a yearly salary guide and in there they include a guide of qualified employees and how much they are earning in popular roles within the accountancy and financial tuition. And what we're going to do is run through that and I'm going to outlay what I believe you could be earning in different roles at different levels of the organisation within the accountancy and financial department. Previously up here I have done a video on what you could earn as a student studying towards accountancy qualification but today we're going to take it one step further and look at what your career potential earnings are as a fully qualified management accountant or a financial accountant. But before we do go ahead with that, I do want to touch on the limitations that you are about to see within this Hayes study. And the first limitation on that is that people in the same role can have varying levels of pay. And that is ultimately down to the experience that they have. Let's compare, for example, someone who's just come into the business as a 20 year old student accountant versus someone that is 40 years old and has been in the role for 20 years. Naturally, that person who's been in that role for 20 years probably had salary revisions throughout that time. And therefore, they are likely to be on a higher salary than someone coming into the business new. And this is ultimately what makes it difficult and doesn't make it black and white to really understand the earnings that you can have within your accountancy and finance career. And the other factor that can really underpin the salary that you earn will be in the form of your full compensation package. As you get higher and higher through the organization, you will be compensated in other ways than just a base salary. You may receive an additional bonus based on your performance. You may receive pension contributions. You may get private healthcare for yourself and your family. You may get a health and fitness membership. But above all of that, when you get to direct the levels of the company, you may be given shares in the company rather than a salary. And the reason being is that then links your performance in with the value of your compensation. So if you work hard for that business, you drive results, then your shares will increase in price and therefore your compensation will be higher for you. We're not a school anymore. You need to work for it. So ultimately, as you move up higher through the business, you are getting compensated for the performance that you are able to achieve within that business. So we are just going to go into the Hayes salary guide. Now, please note, I wasn't able to get hold of the 2021 version, so we are using the 2020 version, but I don't expect this to be materially different, and I genuinely believe the salaries are still a very good guide for what you can achieve as a fully qualified accountant. Now, obviously, the longer you're in an organization, the more chance you have of being a higher level. So we're gonna be splitting the nine or 10 roles on the table on page 44 into three particular areas. You're going to have your short-term career, your medium-term career, and your long-term career. We're just gonna take a look at London because I feel like London is an area, a region of the UK, which is understood by everybody. What you can do is then you can go into the Hay Salary Guide after this video, find your region, and then align your salary with the expectations of your role. past your exams, you become chartered, you're now either a management or a financial accountant. You're in the early stages of your career, and because of this, you can't demand as much compensation. So you are expected, in my opinion, from what I've seen, to earn anywhere between about 45, 
and £55,000. Now what you can see in this video is that the management accountant will have a typical salary of £52,500 and the financial accountant in London will be £55,000. The ranges of those are anywhere between about £47,500 and £60,000. Now what I would say here is people at the end, the other end, 60,000, are a very fortunate position. From what I've seen as a newly qualified accountant, those levels of salaries are fairly rare. So don't go expecting 60,000, you should be expecting nearer 45 and 50,000 pounds. Been in the business two, three years post qualification and you're then starting to look at slightly higher roles. You're beginning to look at business finance analyst, a finance manager, business partner, or a systems accountant. And what you can see there is salaries typically at anywhere between about 60 and 67 thousand pounds. I do just want to caveat these job titles. These are typical job titles that are interchanged for all levels of roles within all levels of the organization. My first role in the business I work at now was called a finance analyst, but I was not earning anywhere near the money that is put on this table. One business partner at one company may not be the same as a business partner at another company. And this is what makes it really difficult to identify what salary you should be on for what job within that organization. So we're looking at those level roles anywhere between 50 and 80,000 pounds. And this can all vary on what size your role is, who your main stakeholders are, how much experience you've had, how well your company pays, what other compensation you get rather than a base salary. And because of that, it makes it really difficult to understand a ballpark figure for what you should be earning at those levels of the organization. But typically for those roles, you're in the medium level of the organization. You're no longer trainee, you're no longer newly qualified. You're middle of the business. And then we come into the higher level role. So you've got, from what I can see here, the FP&A manager, the financial controller. These are typically directly below the level of the financial directors. They're on the verge of one or two promotions away from becoming a financial director. And because of that, they're earning very good salaries. They're probably earning fairly high bonuses. They've probably got additional perks, such as private medical health share, reasonable pension contributions, good medical insurance, a lovely company car. So they're not just earning a base salary, but with that, you can be earning a base salary of what looks between, from Hayes, about 80 to 90,000 pounds. And then this is where you start to get into six figures. And I've always said, I would expect the director to earn north of 100,000 pounds. And it appears that Hayes feel the same way. So a financial director, they believe typically will earn 150,000 pounds. And a group financial director or a CFO will earn typically 300, pounds. A director's compensation will be linked heavily with their on the job performance. And their compensation one year in a very overperforming year will be completely different to the next year where if something badly went wrong, they underperform. But what you can expect at director level is six figure plus salaries. The amount of money you actually take home all depends on the performance of you in that role. I think the takeaway for you from this video is that the harder you work and the more you progress through the organization, the more you will learn. Someone who is newly qualified will earn around 50 to 60,000 pound. Someone who is in middle levels of the organization will earn anywhere from about 60 to 90,000 pound. And then I would say that any director above that will be earning around 100,000 pound upwards. And they will then be compensated by things such as company cars, shares, bonuses, you name it, they'll have all the lot thrown in because they're extremely important for the continuity of that business. That is all for me today. I look forward to the next one. I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.